My wife and I have been married for seven years. We live in a cozy home in a town near the sea. We happily welcome the birth of our daughter, Anya. She is five years old this year. Yesterday, my daughter attended the birthday party of a classmate, a boy named Penn. I took my daughter to her friend's house at 8 p.m. for a party. Penn's mother arranged to come pick up Anya around 10.30 because she wanted to organize a pretty grand party for their son. I'm quite comfortable in my child's extracurricular and social activities. Around 10 o'clock I left home to pick up my daughter and returned quite late, around 11.20 p.m. As soon as I got the baby home, my wife put Anya to bed and then she went to sleep and I watched football in the living room and fell asleep. In my sleep, I heard my daughter whispering to me, Daddy, then pulling my sleeve. I woke up and she asked, Dad, guess how old I will be next month? I don't know, I replied half awake. Are you still not sleeping, baby? Suddenly, she pulled out two fingers from her pocket and lifted them up. And then she added four more fingers. I'm six years old, Dad. Her innocent voice made me laugh. I reached out and patted my daughter's head. But then, I immediately realized that something is very, very wrong and looked back. The two fingers my daughter was holding were human fingers. And to be more precise, these were the fingers of a child. Hastily snatching two fingers from my daughter, I squinted my trembling eyes to look carefully at the objects. <laughs> After hearing and seeing everything, my wife panicked and burst into tears, holding our daughter tight. I tried calmly asking our daughter where she got those two fingers from. My daughter innocently said they were a gift from the clown at the party. We immediately called Penn's mother to ask about the activities and attendees at the party. She said that a clown came to perform and gave the children different gift boxes, but the gift box her son received was a few candies. My wife and I looked at each other in shock when we heard her say that. We immediately called the police and provided all the information and evidence for the investigation. The next two days, my husband and I asked for permission for a short leave, and we also asked to work from home to ensure her absolute safety. After investigating and testing DNA from two human fingers, the police revealed the identity of that unfortunate child. It was a boy, one year younger than my daughter, and his family reported him missing two days ago. It is known that after the boy went missing, the family received a blackmail call from a strange phone number. However, the amount of money was too large. The family did not have time to prepare. They only received one last message that their child had died and completely lost contact with the kidnapper. The search for the boy and the clown expanded and became more intense. A few days later, the body of the boy in distress was found in a remote area near the town nearly 30 kilometers, but there was no trace of that clown. Checking all the video recordings and photos at Penn's birthday party, the image of that clown was very blurry. Penn's mother said that she and her husband both thought this was a surprise the other had for the children, so they were not on guard. The photos only captured parts of him, such as his arms, shoulders, and hair. With only such images, it is very difficult to confirm his identity and to hunt down the predator. My wife and I are more scared every time we think that the kidnapper has approached our daughter. He showed these two fingers to my daughter as a challenge to the police, as well as a chilling warning to my family. Surely that pervert has noticed my family and is still somewhere around here.